okay? So my issue is I don't have enough of these problems for you to practice. There's one like this on the test, similar setup. That's your free response question, but they're going to ask different things about it. They might ask for free body diagrams, all that kind of stuff. So I'll have, you got to practice it once now for homework, kind of unlimited time. I'm just kind of checking. I'd like to quiz you over a problem like this in class, like 15 minutes timed, but we get to correct it, something like that. But you get to feel what it's like to explain one of these in 15 minutes. So I got to find one sort of similar. Okay. And then there's one on the test. And then we're ready to test. Solve for the following terms and given quantities. Okay. The surface of the income plane is frictionless. Mu equals zero. Determine what values of theta. So we're changing our ramp in this experiment. Ugh, that's not going to happen on the test. But we could. We could do an experiment. We'll cause the block of mass one to accelerate up the ramp, constant speed, etc. Okay. So even if I don't need to do that, I want a free body diagram mass 1. M1, it'll have a normal force. The normal force will be counteracted, we went over yesterday, by mg cosine theta. Since we don't have a friction, we don't really need that. We're going to have a force of tension, and we're going to have mg sine theta down. Okay. We're going to have the same force of tension on M2, and we're going to have M2G, of course. Okay. Yep. Okay. So let's name down the incline. We did an example like this, right? A recent video yesterday. Down the incline will be our positive direction. Although, whoa, no, wait, we're going to accelerate up. Maybe that should be positive. Yeah, that's what they're asking for. And this is AP. Let's make the right answer the plus and the wrong minus. I'm biased against positive, against negative numbers. Uh, just, just resentment from my own freshman algebra class where I forgot a ton of negative signs. Uh, okay. <clears throat> up the ramp. Okay, so then we have our net force over the mass that gives us our acceleration in our newly formed x-axis that actually turns around the pulley there okay is minus mg sine theta equals minus excuse me okay and then plus oh that's m1 and then plus m2g divided by the total masses now wait a minute. I should I forgot something. I, something something's left out. Because if I free body diagram each mass individually, what does there have to be on there? What's that rope doing? Exactly. There should be tension, right? Actually, I don't need it. Because that is the same thing that happened here. I could still, even though there's a pulley in between on question three, on question two, I had the, the two blocks were one system, and there's a force outside. I can actually use the exact same principle. Here I have two blocks that are one system, but there's two forces on the outside. One, gravity tries to pull this one down. Gravity tries to pull this one the other way, plus or forward. Okay. So that's it. That's my equation of motion that gives me my acceleration. So I have to have, to solve, I have to have this AX greater than zero. Okay, and it's got a plus and a minus term. So, let's see, I need M2, looking at that equation carefully, maybe solving it if I need to, I need M2G has to be greater than M1G sine theta. So that this comes out positive. What values of theta? Okay, in fact, so then here, g is, is 10 meters per second squared. The plus and minus means direction. Okay, so then I have to have theta is the inverse sine of m2 over m1. And that should make sense, because you can take that. It's just going to be a number. <coughs> Ooh, hopefully m2 is less than m1. It's got to be a number up to 1. But okay. 
Uh, that's just going to be a number. We can take the inverse sine of it. Uh, and that looks good. Here's A number one. Slide up the ramp at constant speed. What does constant speed mean? It's, yeah. Zero acceleration. Excellent. Okay, you are ready for some challenging problems. Maybe, okay, we won't do free response. We'll do a little more practice this Monday, but we'll take a quiz over this kind of stuff. Because if you can answer right away, okay, acceleration zero. If you can answer these forces balanced, if you can pick this equation out of a list, right, in a multiple choice question, you'll have five choices. If you can pick the right equation out of a list, you're ready to try some. Okay, low risk, you can do corrections. Okay, that just means these guys have to be equal so they cancel out. M2G equals M1G sine theta. We're going to slide up the ramp at constant speed. So that means, oh, careful. Uh, I messed up number one. I was overconfident. It needs to be the sign. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. So that means for number two, that's right. Theta equals inverse sine of M2 over M1. But should theta be greater than this? or less to get me accelerating up the ramp. I think I think it needs to be less because sine theta needs to be small. I like right like if I if this was a flat table, then of course it would run away. M two would run away with M one. If it was flat and there's no friction, M two would just easily drag it off. Okay? So if this angle approaches zero, then I slide. And that's really the best logic <laughs> to use Oh, give me all that stuff. What? Watch me spend all year learning to use this technology, and then they, like, take it away at the end of the year. Okay. To see this more carefully... This is worth examining because we're pretty much done. So I need m2 over m1 to be greater than sine theta. Okay, and then if I take the inverse sine of both sides to remove my sine, the pointy part, the less than sign, points to theta. So yes, I need theta less. If I had to justify, College Board will also often ask you to justify your answer, like justify why does theta have to be less or or give some logic, that's the kind of stuff that they mean. Like, well, if theta shrank to zero, right, because I could easily say, I could easily flip this sign accidentally, working around it, um, right, it's easier to do part two and solve where they're exactly equal and acceleration is exactly zero. But think of the extreme case, okay? If theta approach zero, then I'm on a flat horizontal surface, and yeah, of course they accelerate, because there's gravity on one and there's no other forces on the other. M2 just drags M1 over. But if you put theta zero high enough, oh, they'll start to balance. It becomes an Atwoods machine. It could accelerate one way or the other. Okay. And then, if the coefficient of kinetic friction and box is mu k, derive but do not solve an equation satisfied by the value of theta, which will cause the box to slide up at constant speed. Wait, what? derive an equation satisfied the, by the value of theta which will cause the box so now I do have friction and I want to solve for theta again yes that is what those words mean craziness okay do we have this stuff written down? I'm actually going to, it's going to take so much space, I'm going to erase and do it fast. I've been following along, right? There's a video of this that will appear. Oh, dear. Hey, <clears throat> I definitely am not going to post and direct you to my videos, but, if you're an in-person, but you could find the link to my YouTube channel.
and you can just go and do them all. Okay, we're approaching 10 minutes here. So now I have a friction force. Okay, so my, again, my, we're going to slide up at constant speed. Friction is going to point down because we're moving up. So we have minus mg sine theta. Should be after enough times writing these down. And I, so I just have a force of friction here also. And it's going to be mu times mg cosine theta. And then I have the force pulling up along that way. That's, oh, these are m1s. That's plus m2g. Okay, and the tensions would cancel out if we did all the forces. We divide that whole mess by m1 plus m2. Okay, and we have constant speed, and so it all equals zero. Okay, so I really don't need that m1, m2. Every term has a g, so that's going to cancel out. So zero equals m1 sine theta minus mu m1 cosine theta. And then, whoop, those are both negative, plus m2. And that's it. Okay. And we're solving for theta itself? Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. right, but do not solve. Oh, 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 never mind. I need a lot of space, but not a lot of time. Derive, but do not solve an equation. Okay, and then the derive, I would do another free body diagram up there, like I piggybacked on that one. And then all you need to do to derive the acceleration is the sum of all my forces on along my newly defined x-axis divided by the total mass. Okay, and, it, and set that equal to zero. And then you plug everything in. That's your derivation. Okay. And we'll leave that there. Um, yep. If they say derive, you're going to have to start from probably Newton's second law and a free body diagram. Okay. But you're allowed, you're certainly allowed to do the axis change like that. Okay. Any questions? Oh, my. Okay.